Hello everybody, welcome to Ministry of Sailing. We're gonna talk about tips and tricks today from the pros. Today we're gonna to talk about seasickness in your medical kit. Specifically, we're gonna talk about one type of medicine that you need to be aware of. Now this type of medicine that we're talking about has a side effect. This seasickness medicine can make you forget things for 48 hours. This medicine causes psychosis. This seasick medicine also provides a date rape drug for half of the world. So. Get out your med kit, and let's see what it is. We're going to be interviewing Captain Jane Durden and Dr. Sarah Jordan Crow. Stick with us. You're going to want to know what drug you want to check your med bag out, because if this is in there, you need to know what to do with it. Watch your lines, Johnny. <laughs> Hey, I'm Jane Durden. I'm a professional captain, a long-time sailor. I run Sailing Happy Place, and so I'm generally moving boats around, taking crews out. I work inshore and offshore, and I've had a lot of experience with people being seasick, feeling seasick, and um, yeah, just trying to make sure that my crews are happy and healthy and that we get where we need to get to. Hi, my name is Sarah Jordan Crow. I am new to sailing, but I am not new to medicine. Um, I am a physician, a neonatologist, um, but here today to talk to you about some of the more medical sides of um, motion sickness and the medicines we use to prevent it. As your lawyer, I'd like you to give your legal proviso, please. So this is not medical advice. This is information provided for entertainment purposes and my views are my own and do not represent those of my employer. There you go, perfect. Turn that down. You ready? Yep, go ahead, All ask right. questions. So Sarah, doctor, what is seasickness? What's happening? So really simply, seasickness is just when your, so your eyes are telling you where you are in time and space. Mm -hmm. And then you have little rocks in your ears that are also telling you where you are in time and space. And seasickness is when those two things aren't matching up Mm -hmm. And so it's causing nausea in the brain. So there's the group of things that you could take, like Dramamine, Bonine, they're antihistamines, right? Mm -hmm. There are a second set of drugs, the most common is called scopalamine. What kind of drug is that? It's an anticholinergic. <laughs> She'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then there are some other things that you can do as well, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But can you talk about what those two principal groups of drugs do? Yeah, so the nausea center in the brain is in a place called the medulla oblongata, and it has receptors for histamine, receptors for cholinergic or acetylcholine, and it has receptors for serotonin. So any medication that block the action of those receptors are going to help prevent the nausea and alleviate the nausea, um, which is why those are the class of medications that we use. So the other story that I've heard, a um, friend of mine, she was wearing a patch and so were other crew members. Um, she started to feel awful um, and was really concerned that she'd taken the patch before and she didn't understand why. And what had happened, uh, Piers, is that her crewmate's patch had fallen off um, because of sweat. It had not stuck on properly. It had dropped onto the deck and she had stepped onto it. Um, so she was getting the double dose of her patch and the one that was stuck on the sole of her foot. Um, so be careful with these things, right? That they are powerful and if you have to take it and you need that powerful medication, that's great. But don't stick two of them on because one of them didn't work. Um, <laughs> be don't aware of it. And, and I think the other factor here too is if you're putting one on, let everybody else know on the crew because that means that they're watching for how you're reacting and where did the patch go after that. Every single med student when they're in med school learns a mnemonic to remember the side effects for anticholinergics. 
So you become um, hot as a hair, mm -hmm. which is where, you know, you think of the body kind of revving up, right? That metabolism revving up to help you run away. You become dry as a bone. So your body isn't gonna waste any energy with silly things like digestion if you're trying to outrun a saber-toothed tiger. So you're gonna have drying up of that saliva. It's shifting all of its energy towards your muscles. Um, you have blind as a bat. So your eyes start to dilate in order to take in as much light as possible in order to better fight off the saber-toothed tiger. And so while that is useful in that fight or flight instance, if you are on a boat and your eyes are dilating mm -hmm. and they're not narrowing the way that the pupils are supposed to, that can affect your vision. Then the last one is mad as a hatter. So this is something that the average person often doesn't know about, but those um, acetylcholine receptors are also in your brain. And when they get acted on, you can have um, memory loss, you can have inhibitions in your decision-making, have psychosis. And unfortunately, um, there are individuals that have utilized these side effects where um, they're using the medication to render people subjectable to um, sexual assault and robberies and other things. It's, it's in the data, it's, um, they're actually developing kind of point of care testing to look for scopalamine as you know, people commonly refer to as a date rape drug. So these side effects really are nothing to be messed with. Other stories of younger people taking it, um, one sounded fun for the girl, not really, who was doing it, but she, she was hallucinating enough that in the middle of the night she got all of the crew's gear and brought it up into the cockpit and she wanted everybody up at three o'clock in the morning and she was then going to depart the boat. And I Do your own research when it comes to looking up the side effects for any drug that's out there. When you start looking at scopolamine, this is what you're gonna find. You're gonna find you become very docile. You start losing your will, you're open to suggestions. You can lose consciousness for up to 24 to 48 hours. Complete memory loss. These are some of the side effects. The other thing which is interesting is, if you do more research, you're gonna find out that sailors really appreciate the way it can work for long periods of time. But be careful not to use it for prolonged because the patch will cause hallucinations. All right, if you're a, a person who's getting on a boat to go somewhere else, and that happens all the time, right? Yeah, we yeah. We see the people fogs, like, we see this. Yeah. I, I mean, nobody says, I wanna go camping with four people in the woods, but you wanna go sailing with four people in the woods, they're gonna say, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, 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 what questions, if you're the single person jumping on a boat going yeah. somewhere, uh, what drugs would you wanna know about if there was a risk, and what yeah. those risks would be? Not even a single person, just, you know, any because person. you are yeah. coming yeah. on this crew. Yeah, yeah. Any, per any crew members. So from a crew member, what should you ask? Um, so look, if I were a crew member, I think now knowing this, I would be asking who is taking scopalamine, what else are people taking and what's going on? Are there other things that people should ask about and should, should they know about? I mean, as someone who does not have my own boat, um, yet. you know, yet, you know, maybe, maybe one down the line, um, it, it really does put you in a very vulnerable position, especially, you know, as a, frankly, a petite female crew member, right? Like I am, I just got a message from someone last week inviting me to come sailing and, and you know, you do want to ask a lot of questions to maintain your safety, right? You do want to ideally make sure that the people you're going out with know people that you know, even though that's still not a guarantee of safety. Um, and then, you know, like we were talking about, like medications, especially ones that can affect any effect on mental status at all. You know, scopalamine being one of them that you don't necessarily think of. You know, recognizing that alcohol is one of those medications, right? Um, any other recreational things you might be taking that can have an effect on mental status. Just yeah. being really aware of what's on board, who's using them, um, and you know what you're consuming yourself and just kind of what position that you're in that you're just always maintaining a safe. All right, we ready? Yep. Okay, so you've got someone, they're not feeling well, we don't want them to feel badly. What else can people do that is not taking a drug or maybe in addition to taking the yeah. drugs? So there are a 
good, effective, non-pharmacologic measures you can take. Um, it is similar to the medications where an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if you can take these, use these before you get um, mm -hmm. motion sick, it's better. Um, but there are these acupressure bands, like this brand is called C bands actually. And then you have acu um, stimulation bands, um, which, you know, these ones hit your acupressure point here with an actual physical point, and then those ones use stimulation to do it. Um, but there's actually great data for these. So this is evidence-based nausea management from everything from chemotherapy to motion sickness. Um, there was a You've just justified my $200. <laughs> I, I bought this thinking, well, it can't harm me. It probably won't harm me, but they're probably not scientifically proven. And she found the scientific proof. I'm feeling very... Oh. Um, actually, just last year, they came out with a study using these um, acu-stimulation bands where they um, put test subjects in um, a chair to stimulate motion sickness. Awesome. And yeah, and it was a blinded study. So either you had the acu-stimulator band or you had a sham band. So, um, you know, no concern about placebo effect. And the people with the acu stimulator bands were the only ones that made it through the whole session yeah. um, of all the G-forces. And so um, they really saw a legitimate difference with the bands for motion sickness specifically. So I'd say $200 I'm well I'm trying spent. to make it work, but it's, it's kind of, I always thought that at least if I'm focusing on the fact that my arm feels funny, I'm probably, you know, it's making me not feel sick, but it's pretty incredible. It's a little bit of stimulation. It goes in. You feel it in the back of your hand. You can't see it, but right now, it's putting a little pulse all the way down into here in my little finger, and apparently that's got some connection with your stomach. Yes, the thought is that there is a neuroendocrine, it's affecting yep. your neuroendocrine system, kind of the way acupuncture does, like those pressure points. Um, and, you know, the, as far as data comparing the two, the, the biggest difference just seems to be ease of use with the acu-stimulation yep. bands, that people are less likely to use it wrong yep. um, than the acupressure bands, but the acupressure bands are super affordable. You can get them yep. at CVS, they're very cheap. Um, so I think both options are good. So here's some evidence. You need to arm yourself with the truth in this matter. This is from the National Institute of Health. It particularly says here that when the person who was hospitalized, fully recovered. He was given precautions about traveling, of course, to other countries. But they also said that scopolamine is also used as a predatory drug. And also make yourself aware that the United States Embassy has a warning out through many embassies as this is used throughout the world. But this one from Columbia specifically says, be aware that the use of scopolamine to incapacitate and rob victims has also occurred with frequency throughout Colombia. Thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something today. If you learn something new, that's our goal. Please like, share, make sure people have the right information and know what to do. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe.